Hello and welcome to the item Risala Update Interactions. We have once again with us Yogendra Yadav, political activist who has been consistently working on the ground over the last few months and after the Lok Sabha elections and the formation of the new government. Uh, one of the major topics that he has been addressing is the issue of caste census and how the whole process should not be diluted. But then since we have Yogendra with us, we are not going to confine to that topic. We will look at some of the developments or developing political stories that are happening in this country, including the forthcoming assembly elections to Haryana and Jammu and Kashmir. Yogendra, welcome once again. Thank you. Yeah. So I think Kyle, we are just going to see the first phase of polling in Jammu and Kashmir in the next couple of days. And of course, Haryana is also going to poll in early October. So, uh, what is your sense at this point of time as to how things are developing in these two states? Uh, Venkat, honestly, I have not been to any of the states as yet. I mean, I travel to Haryana because it's my home state, but not really to observe elections. Um, and therefore, uh, I don't think I'm the right person to comment on the trends. Uh, and uh, also, uh, one of the things I said after the Lok Sabha election was that I'm actually not going to make any election forecast. Right. I had to do it under very, very special circumstances. I don't want to get into that business again. You were very kind to cover it at that point and no, it was no. important. It was a national duty at yeah, that time yeah, to absolutely. say these things. Yeah. Now, this is like one more election. Yeah. Uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, to my mind, the most important thing is that the elections are happening. Okay. Uh, that this should be a step towards restoration of statehood and possibly of some kind of special autonomy mm. that Jammu Kashmir has enjoyed mm. and uh, which is necessary and essential to retain that bridge and bond uh, that we have created with Jammu Kashmir. Uh, so in that sense, irrespective of the outcome, the more important thing is elections are being held that people are participating and uh, uh, let, the, let the democratic process be in full flow. That's what matters to me more than anything else. Uh, it also uh, exposes, in a sense, the uh, big claims that the BJP has been making. Uh, the BJP said that after uh, abolition of 370, you know, it has brought great boons to people of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, it has uh, completely normalized the situation, that people are welcoming of it. Uh, one of the tests is already conducted, the second remains to be done. Uh, if abolition of 370 had created such a wonderful situation in the Kashmir Valley, and if the people of Kashmir was, were so much welcoming of it, why did BJP not put up many candidates yes, there? Yes. I mean, that's an odd thing, isn't it? You know, yes, yes. if you have done such a great work in Odisha, you would go and put up candidates in Odisha. Why not? I mean, there's something odd. So, I mean, in a sense, that tells the lie of the first part of the claim. The second is about Jammu. I think we need to really see because to my mind, uh, abolition of 370 hasn't been a great idea for Jammu, Jammu as well, yeah. because uh, people of Jammu enjoyed a special status, mostly Hindus, but Jammu has Hindus as well as Muslims. Uh, they enjoyed a very special status and special rights as far as property is concerned and some other things are concerned. That right, however, has uh, been taken away. So I don't think people of Jammu may be very happy with it, but let's see. Um, yeah. And also there is this question in Ladakh, because you know, Ladakh has got... Uh, a number of issues which are very specific to Ladakh. Absolutely. And as you know, mm. uh, when Ladakh was made a union territory, the first response of the people was welcome it. You know, we've been liberated, you know, great, good riddance and so on. And frankly, the fact is that uh, uh, under the state of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh was actually a very neglected territory uh, uh, that uh, politicians, both of Jammu and of Kashmir, didn't care very much for Ladakh. So yes, initially they thought this was great liberation, but then they realized that actually this is just being consigned to even further neglect. Yeah. Earlier they were under the benign neglect of uh, Srinagar, 
now the benign neglect of delhi which is far more distant yeah. more difficult so now they are taking a march yeah. uh, sona mon sona mon chuk they are taking a march it's a historic march it's yeah. a very gandhian thing to do mm. they are marching all the way from ladakh to delhi yeah uh, so that really tells you something about the kind of situation that prevails uh, so to my mind uh, unfortunately the uh, abolition of 370 did not improve the situation it made matters worse and uh, let us hope that this election would be the beginning of mending the situation somewhat right right uh on haryana uh i think the simple fact is that uh, congress enjoys a very significant advantage it's a beginning at advantage i don't know what the final outcome will be but at the starting point of the race congress starts strong it starts strong for two or three reasons one psychologically speaking simply looking at the lie of the land uh congress and bjp got five seats each yeah. now we know if we go by 2019 bjp whatever bjp's performance in lok sabha election in a state election bjp comes down substantially Uh, that has been the case in almost all states that's right uh, haryana especially you see mm. in 2019 bjp led in 80 in in 79 out of uh, 90, 90 uh, segments yeah. and went so nearly 80 and when it came to assembly election bjp was down to 40 yeah now uh, it's 5 and 5 uh, in terms of electoral uh, uh, segments bjp led in 42 out of 90 so if from 70 80 they come down to 40 from 42 where would they come down so that's one simple fact uh, uh, second is that uh, in terms of there there's enormous anti incumbency uh, when they had to remove mr khatter after 9 years of rule you clearly are admitting that we can't go with this phase to the to the local election so you've conceded defeat right mr naib singh saini is uh, mostly a harmless person who has left no impact whatsoever most people in haryana would not even know his name mm. uh, so they go without face they go with enormous anti incumbency yeah. that's a second and factor. also the internal problems with even a minister refusing to shake hands with him yeah, after yeah, being yeah, yeah. all kinds of uh, yeah. so, so so haryana is once again a situation where bjp's internal faction fight uh almost matches congress in fact almost kind of outmatches the congress okay. which happens very very rarely mm-hmm. because congress is a party known for open display of disaffections bjp maintains that out of facade but even that out of facade is broken in the case of haryana and the third factor is uh, with the coming of uh, vinesh and uh, you know the the recent developments mm-hmm. organizational mm-hmm. and others so with all these three things uh, congress has a step forward congress has an initial advantage the real question is how much of that initial advantage would congress be able to convert into elections uh, will it be a thin victory which congress just somehow manages will it be a landslide okay this uh, this is the only these are the kind of range that we are looking at yeah. so basically what is the what is the amp factor going to do because you know we had a lot of discussions on whether the aam aadmi party in the, there will be some alliance between the aam aadmi party and in some pockets with samajwadi party but then samajwadi party finally has said that you know that they will support the congress without without uh, making any demands but the aam aadmi party situation is quite tricky and also with the release of arvind kejriwal at a crucial juncture it's also being seen as a, as a ploy by the central government i mean of course the, the, the bail has not been granted by the central government per se but Uh, it's being seen as something uh, the the central government has worked out to kind of uh, field arvind kejriwal in haryana against the congress how do you look at the situation i don't know these things i i wouldn't read uh, political motives in the supreme court's judgment uh, it could well be a coincidence it helps the uh, the aam aadmi party but uh, honestly when much of this conversation about aam aadmi party alliance with congress in haryana began i was quite confused because uh, purely electorally speaking congress does not need any alliance in haryana in rajasthan they did yeah they did not do the alliances and they paid very badly for that in haryana they don't need an alliance okay. uh, a because congress is doing fairly well b because aam aadmi party really does not have uh, 
I mean, I can't think of a single candidate who I would at this stage say he's a winnable candidate. Okay. There was one, Nirmal Singh from uh, Ambala, who shifted to Congress anyway. Right. With his daughter. So they don't have that kind of support. Uh, I can't think of any constituency where Ahmadmi Party would Can say make a, make a, make a huge impression. Huge its, impression. Uh, yeah, would have a substantial number of votes of party, not of candidate. Right. Which it can transfer to another party like Congress. I can't think of those places. So the alliance, uh, in a sense, was a non starter. Hmm. Uh, it did not happen, and that doesn't surprise me. Uh, in terms of prospects of Ahmadi Party, I don't see it making a huge difference in uh, Haryana. Uh, they would be lucky if they save deposit in a few constituencies. Saving deposit is not easy. Hmm. In a handful of constituencies, they might uh, save deposit. And it's anybody's guess as to who exactly will they damage. Right. If Ahmadmi Party does well in urban areas, uh, the damage would be to the BJP, okay. not so much to the Congress. So really, I don't see that being a very major factor in Haryana politics in this election. As for Samajwadi Party, Samajwadi Party has generally been non-existent in Haryana, Haryana. Hmm. unlike Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. See, Madhya Pradesh, Samajwadi Party has a presence in a few areas. Yeah. And it was a mistake on the part of Congress not to go for an alliance with Samajwadi Party in Madhya Pradesh. But in Haryana, they are largely non-existent. Yeah, yeah. I think they must be so confined to a, a couple of seats or something like that. Possibly, not, not yeah. even that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a nice gesture on the mm. part of Akhilesh Ji to say that, okay, I'll support that. But it's, these are in the range of gestures. There's no substantial mm. votes that anyone can transfer there. Yeah. What about the infighting in the Congress? In fact, uh, there are some areas where this infighting has got some uh, kind of concrete ramifications. Like, uh, uh, for example, Kiran Chaudhary's uh, area, the, the constituencies that... Yeah. Uh, Kiran Chaudhary ji had shifted to the BJP even before the Lok Sabha election. So yeah. that no longer counts as a Congress in fighting. Uh, in an election which a party is uh, expected to win, you're bound to have 30 contenders for every seat. Uh, and when I was looking at the data this morning, uh, they say Congress has 29 rebels in 20 constituencies and BJP has uh, some 20 rebels in 15 constituencies. Um, not much of a difference. Okay. I would have expected much bigger rebellion. Within I the Congress? Have, but the, I mean, a party which is expected to uh, win. largely seem to be winning, you have multiple contenders mm -hmm. and Congress is not the BJP with that kind of iron discipline and things and the Prime Minister making a call to withdraw and things of that sort don't happen in Congress. So to be absolutely honest, I'm actually surprised that the uh, rebellion is uh, smaller than what I had expected it to be. And the gap between Congress and the BJP is not as much as I would have expected it to be. Right. So again, I don't expect that to become a very, very big factor this time so far. Okay, coming to the caste reservation uh, and caste census uh, aspect, which of course you have been very consistently kind of uh, talking about over the last couple of months. Uh, and today, of course, the, the new development that one read in today's papers is that the JDU has now very categorically stated that caste census has to happen at the national level. And uh, apparently the BJP leadership has also agreed to it. What do you make out of all this? You know, I think first we should understand what is caste census and why it is needed because uh, so much confusion and so much of complete inability and refusal to understand. This morning I read the Times of India editorial saying, oh my God, save this country from caste census. And uh, I I'm amazed. I'm amazed at this mindset. Uh, you know, I think we should clarify a few things. The first thing that we must tell our viewers again and again is that caste census is not a casteist attempt. In fact, precisely because you want to abolish caste, you want to annihilate caste, is why you need a caste census. You know, the idea that there is some social identity that you don't approve of, Therefore, you just close your eyes and it will disappear. That's a very stupid idea. 
the way you address any form of inequality in the world is not by wishing it away, but by opening your eyes, by addressing it frontally. So, people like me, all of us who are who are opposed to the inequalities of caste system and who want to abolish it, must begin by recognizing, categorizing, measuring, effecting, uh, developing cause-effect relationships so that we can eliminate it. Right. And caste census is an absolutely first step in that direction. Somehow, everyone mixes you know, in a slip of tongue, you also said caste reservation, caste yeah. census. Yeah. Because in everyone's mind, these two things are completely mixed. Yeah. And uh, today's Times of India editorial, it's a, it's a, it's a rant against uh, caste reservations, whether they like it or not. But I've been saying one thing. The second terrification is this. Reservations and census are two entirely okay. different things. Anyone who is honestly opposed to caste-based reservations should support the caste census mm. because those people who oppose caste-based reservations say that, look, caste is no longer relevant. It used to be relevant 100 years ago. Today, you have rich and poor in every, other, every community, every caste. So give advantage to poor. Why bother about caste? caste. If that is indeed the case, let us get caste census done we would get to know. Yeah, absolutely. If someone says there is no difference between men and women when it comes to salary, how do you settle that claim? Mm. You do it by doing a survey and saying, okay, women get this much for the same job, men get this much, or maybe they get equal. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. What amazes me, Vinkit, is that people are opposed to diagnosis. Caste census is nothing but a diagnostic tool. It is not a medicine. It is not a surgery. It simply is an x-ray. Absolutely. And why should people oppose an x-ray is an amazing thing. I, you know, I think it, it shows a certain mindset. And my suspicion is this. You know, so, so suppose uh, I, I have a fall and I'm saying it you know, looks bad. Should we go and get an x-ray done? And you, as my friend, may say, no, no, maybe you don't need it. That's all right. But when I actually go towards hospital and you stand in the way and say, no, I shall not let you get this x-ray. And I wonder whether you are my friend or not. Right. You know? That's what really what's happening. I suspect that those who opposed caste census actually know what the census will reveal. And after all, it's not such a major mystery in our country. Yeah. I think everyone has two or three suspicions, which they don't talk about. They, don't, they know this to be true, but they don't want it to be authenticated. First, everyone knows that the number of the sheer population size of the, of the deprived communities, especially OBCs, is much bigger than is the reservation for them, much bigger than anyone acknowledges it to be the case. And that the upper caste are much smaller in size than they like to believe it to be the case, as we saw in the case of Bihar. Yeah. Everyone used to claim upper caste are 20% plus. Even people like me believe that they are probably around 15%. When it happened, they are only 10.4%. Absolutely. That's the first thing. Second, people also, those who oppose caste census also know something more, which is that it will show that the condition of uh, some of the OBCs is actually so bad. The educational, social and economic condition in some ways worse than some of the scheduled caste communities. The lower, I've consistently maintained it, the bottom of the OBC. Like which other communities that these you... Are, these are, uh, you know, number one, OBC happens to contain within itself a large number of nomadic communities, yeah. which are called OBCs. Yeah. Uh, clearly, their condition is worse than probably all the scheduled caste communities. Uh, in the case of... Uh, uh, in the case of, uh, uh, and then there are service and artisanal communities within OBC. Those service and artisanal com communities, uh, the, you know, dhobis in many of the states are in OBC category, not in S in some states SC, in some states OBC. Uh, Nai, there are uh, 
the many agricultural labor communities their conditions are worse than that of the, the upper end of the, the sc industry. so the second suspicion people have is that the conditions are actually worse than we when then we want to know and the third and i think the real suspicion is that people know and believe that uh, this will expose the privilege of the privileged that is really where the opposition is coming from because the biggest privilege in the world is to not let your privileges be seen to have a veil of ignorance over your suspicions is the biggest privilege in the world uh, and that is precisely what they are afraid of i'll give you an instance from bihar bihar has had caste survey bihar caste survey if you look at the educational profile unfortunately the reporting in the media was so poor about bihar caste survey it hasn't shown the kind of things that it has brought about if you look at those who have employable degrees and a employable degree is either post graduation or uh, mbbs bs i don't count ordinary ba as employable degree. okay so if you look at employable degrees then among the kayasthas it is 10.08% of the entire kayastha population right. among the bhunyas and mosahas it is 0.01 you see the relationship it's 1000 times of difference between these two now this is what they don't want to come out you know this is why the opposition to caste census and that is precisely why we should push more and more of it because honestly uh, there are all kinds of questions that are debated every day in this country uh, should sub communities remain obc or yeah, not yeah so this is these communities have become so powerful they should not remain obc well then get caste census done you'll get to know this absolutely they say should we have a subdivision within sc or obc well get a caste census done you would be able to see whether you know some obcs are doing relatively better some are not or what should be the creamy layer get a ca caste census is evidence based uh, basis for any policy which is exactly what judiciary has been demanding all these years why are people running away from evidence why is it that they are saying don't put a thermometer in? no no yeah, no yeah but no now now, why? now of course uh, th th there seems to be an agreement um, across the political spectrum including from the bjp or, uh, so what do you think that uh, what are the kind of parameters that one needs to kind of you know look at uh, look i think it must be uh, credited as rahul gandhi's first major political success if the bjp is forced to go for caste census the fact is bjp was most unwilling this bjp in the past bjp has supported it in the mm. parliament now they were most unwilling to do it uh, the bjp did not want it and therefore if the bjp has now been forced to do it it is clearly congress specifically rahul gandhi's mm. success uh, the we will hearing for the last uh, few days the part that the Uh, bjp is that they're not in principle opposed to it yeah. it's been considered although i must say i still suspect a certain foul play and the foul play could be this and this is what we should guard against the government could say okay like the sc and st have always been enumerated this people normally don't know all the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe communities have always been enumerated, enumerated. their jati has been recorded data has been prepared etc the government can say we will do the same in the case of obc as well which is to say we will have a caste census of 70% of indian population 75 80 we don't know but the privileges of the privileged will still be kept under the curtain so, so the parameters will be so designed that it will be just a number count yeah. and not a clear census <coughs> or a, a process where their uh, socio economic conditions are no uh, that they can't do hmm. that they can't do because the moment you include one variable in the census then as you know if you have one column then you can do cross tabulation with the remaining 49 columns that they cannot prevent uh, the game will be to keep the upper caste out of this okay 
uh, they will say yeah. SC, ST and OBC. OBC. Okay. And we will, so the remaining 20% will be kept out. Uh, that could well be the case. I'm not sure if that would the government would say, you know, why do it for others? We don't need it and so on and so forth. So I don't still rule out some foul play in this. Anyway, Yogendra, since you've also been uh, consistently, you know, advocating the cause for the last uh, few months and especially after the elections, uh, I think it's also partly a victory for you. I mean, of course, you say, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's of course, Rahul Gandhi has been kind of championing it and he has been very consistently taking it forward. Uh, but as you very rightly pointed out, there are lots of ifs and buts on this. And we'll continue to keep watching these ifs and buts and of course with, with you and along with others. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.